Yes. Good afternoon. Today I have the lovely Bev with me. Hi, Bev. Would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself? Hi, Donna. Thank you for having me. I'm Bev Harris. I am Scottish. I'm originally from Edinburgh, um, but I've also lived in Somerset and Wiltshire and in France. And at the moment, I live in Kintyre, which is a peninsula on the west coast of Scotland. Close to the sea, which is <laughs> lovely. I can see the sea from my window. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, I just booked to go to bloody Scotland actually, which is in Stirling. So it'd be the first oh, time I've ever been to Scotland. Yeah. No, that's not far away from where I live if you're a pro, but because I live on a peninsula, it means lots of driving and lots of mountains and locks in the way. So it takes limit hours to get there. Blimey. Oh, and I should say that I've also written a book. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, books. Yes, that's right. That's why we're here. Yes. Do you have a copy of it to hand? I will, I do, yeah. Mm. Here's, here's one I prepared earlier. <laughs> oh, Conspiracy of Cat. Which That's was out yesterday. Mystery. And I'm just about to be invaded by a very panty pug. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Ruby. Okay. Oh, oh. Here we go. Have a guest. <laughs> Are you going to stay, little guest? No, no. Okay, no. she's off now. She's done her disruption, so she's quite happy. Hi, right, off you go. Bye. Okay. We always right. we always love pet interruptions. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's just going to stand in a pant now on the floor. It's warm. Um, it's, it's warm today. Which is quite unusual for Scotland. Yeah, and it's grey and horrible here. <laughs> oh, we've got we've got the sun. Ah, well, give it back. We want it. <laughs> no, we hardly ever get. It. <laughs> a fair point. <laughs> um, did you always want to be a writer? Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I remember being at school and. Uh, reading books and, and doing essays on, on books in English class and um, being inspired to sort of read more of, of certain authors and imagining what it must be like to, to write a book and have people read it and, and thinking you know, that must be a, a great feeling and, and I did enjoy writing, I enjoyed uh, writing wee stories and things in school, so yeah. I've always wanted to be a writer. I was always a reader until now. And then what made you take the plunge and go for it? Uh, well, I suppose life always got in the way because one, once I left school and I went straight into work. I did go to university a bit later, but um, by that time I had a, a daughter. Um, so life gets in the way, but I got older, she got older, left school left school, left home, made her own way in life. And then I met and married the love of my life, Ian, and we moved to France. And no sooner had we renovated our house in France than COVID happened. And suddenly we were already in an isolated place in France, a tiny wee hamlet in the middle of the countryside with not a lot going on, not many neighbours. But when COVID kicked in, we found ourselves in a French confinement, which was probably the strictest in the world. And we were literally um, under house arrest, everybody was. We were only allowed out for an hour a day and no further than a kilometre from our house. And we were already separated from friends and family and it got quite, it, it got to me. I started to feel uh, quite depressed and already afraid of what was going on in general. But years ago, I told Ian about this story that was sort of going around in my head. And he said, why don't you sit down and write that story? And I did. And it was a fantastic distraction. It kept me busy for months. And at the end, I had a, I had a story. 
that's that's how it changed for me. <laughs> and it's um it's I mean like you said it's a supernatural murder mystery but quite unusual settings. So why did you choose uh, the settings? Oh golly. Um, well, Edin Edinburgh is what I know best. I know the I know the city inside out. I've lived there for forty odd years, and it's my hometown. So it was easy to write about Edinburgh because a lot of the time I've heard, you know, you should write about what you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tanzania is a bit different, um, but that goes back to the middle nineties when we got our first PC. And I don't know if uh, I don't know what really what generation you could call that, but for me, God, it's a long time ago. And when you bought a PC, you got various discs, and one of them was in Carta. <laughs> you, yeah, you know that. Yeah, so I'm I'm not that old. Okay, and you stuck this thing in, and it was like an encyclopedia. And I remember me and my daughter, who was about nine years old at the time, and we were going through it and we were looking at pictures and we found pictures of Maasai warriors. And we started to read about them and they came from, well, Tanzania and Kenya, but the ones that we were reading about were based in Tanzania. And that sort of captured my imagination. And so that's where it, that's where it came from. From in part <laughs> 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 and my, my sort of fascination with Tanzania, and and as the years have gone past, I've learned more about the country, and, and I just thought it, it made sense to, you know, go from Edinburgh to Tanzania. It made sense to me. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, good old Encarta and homework. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They were great, though. I'm, I'm sure. I mean, now you can just Google it, but it's not the same. Yeah, well, in that administration, you didn't. Well, we, we the Internet was around because I, I worked in an Internet cafe at the time. Um, but you, you had search engines, but nothing like as powerful and as fast as it is now. So, yeah, you can pretty much find out about anything, which is just as well because I needed to do a lot of research. <laughs> yeah and is it uh, somewhere you'd like to visit oh yeah absolutely definitely I would love to go there it's on my bucket list <laughs> yeah I can imagine um so now you've written your first book have you got the taste for it and have you uh, got an idea for the next oh yeah <laughs> I really enjoyed it and and I, I as well as that story there was another one sort of floating around in my head uh, so I've got the second book or the second manuscript is at a very advanced stage uh, I'm still editing it but I would like to get it ready for submission early in the new year and um, that one's called Making Sacrifices and it's another supernatural murder mystery perhaps not as light hearted as Conspiracy of Cats, which isn't all light-hearted, but it's not a dark story. Whereas Making, making Sacrifices is quite a lot darker. So I've got that, and I also have two other stories which are in their early stages. But they're all, they're all supernatural murder mysteries, so I think that's obviously my thing. <laughs> yeah. And uh, did you realise when you started writing that that would be the sort of genre you fell in? Um, I don't know. I don't even know if Conspiracy of Cats started out as a supernatural murder mystery. It was, it was just bizarre. It developed and it, it sort of grew arms and legs and it did its it did its own thing. And making sacrifices sort of came from it. And then the other two stories are all they're they're all sort of in my head. They're all jumbled up. I didn't set out to do that. I didn't think I'm going to write supernatural murder mysteries. I just do. <laughs> it chose me. Yeah, um, a lot of people say that actually, so it's not uncommon. And it's strange how it goes when you start writing what comes out and then where it ends up. Yeah, yeah. And your characters just don't do what you want them to do. Sometimes they they do their own thing, and I totally understand that now. You know that you your characters behave in a certain way, and they they grow. 
a personality and they're not what you set out to, to have them, you know, to have them written as. And uh, they develop their own personality, which is a bit strange. Yeah. Out loud, it's definitely a bit <laughs> weird. But also common, so it's fine. <laughs> That's reassuring. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The amount of times I've heard that, and it's funny now the stuff that people will say to me, and it doesn't, you know, I don't think it's weird at all, um, because <laughs> everyone says it, and you know, characters talking to them and and telling them that they're going off in a different direction is one of those things. Okay. Just doesn't even <laughs> seem weird anymore. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yes, yeah, it's funny. Um, who's been your favourite character to write so far? Oh, well, in Conspiracy of Cats, it has to be Peter. He's the, without giving too much away, he's the, the dead uncle that's not as dead as he should be. <laughs> he's the man who built the White House that jogs goes to visit and that's how come she moves from Edinburgh to, to Tanzania. Um, he died 14 years previously but no sooner has she got there than she discovers that he's not he's not as dead as he should be. He's still around and he's very up for creating a bit of havoc and mischief and also exploiting his relationship with Joss so that he can do things that dead people don't usually get to do like eat food and get drunk and catch up with friends so i i like peter he's fun yeah that sounds Even awesome he's dead, he's <laughs> yeah yeah that sounds great the best of both worlds maybe yeah absolutely <laughs> and what's the most interesting thing you found researching um your books oh golly um well, the, the conspiracy of cats in particular, um, I mean, like I said earlier about finding out about Tanzania and how it started out with one Maasai warrior. And then just I've discovered so much about Tanzania. It's really quite a cool country and the, the people have got quite a cool attitude to life. And the thing that I especially like about them is their attitude towards ecology and conservation. And the way they try and work with animals. Um, for example, Tanzania, about 30% of it is national parks. And then you'll have your, your urban communities. But then in the rural communities, you've got a lot of farmers who've got small farms, not big sprawling like tens of acres. They've, they've just got enough to feed themselves and their family and a little bit to, to sell. But then you get the you you'll get migrating animals such as elephants who want to not only move through these little farms to get to wherever they want to go, but as they're moving through, they're breaking fences and they're eating crops. So the farmers, not just the, I, don't know, I think it started off in Kenya, but now there's uh, four projects in northern Tanzania where they they call it behind fences. Between the fence posts, they suspend beehives. Elephants are terrified of bees. So they use the beehive fences to channel the elephants in the direction that the farmers want them to go. So the elephants still get to where they want to go, but they, the farmers don't have to keep repairing fences and they don't have damaged crops. So it works out really well for everybody. Yeah. And that's just one example. There are hundreds of fantastic projects going on to do with the, the, the land, the sea, the, they have a great coastline and, and it's just, it seems on paper, it seems like a really nice, cool country full of cool people and I would really like to go and visit and see for myself. Yeah, that sounds awesome, I must admit. I mean, I love um, animals and stuff anyway, so the fact that they're doing something naturally that doesn't end up hurting anyone is is amazing. Yeah, because people people need to learn to work more with animals, or we're we're going to lose a lot of animals. We already have, and it, it has to stop. You know, they, they they have to 
we have to stop seeing ourselves as you know top top of the food chain top of everything you know we're at what human beings want is most important because it's not we're we're just part of the ecosystem and the, the sooner we all start working in mm. harmony the better it'll be yeah absolutely um what did you find most difficult or what was surprisingly difficult when you started to write um, this, this the content of the story do you mean uh, just anything if it's your as it's your first um release and i just wondered if there was anything that you sort of wasn't expecting to be so hard when you started writing well i, su I suppose as i got into the story and you've got to you want your characters to go you sort of have an idea of what you want them to do and there's one character in particular in the story that the baddie if you like the villain uh, and i had a lot of difficulty writing some of the scenes that that person's involved in uh, i found that that quite gut-wrenching actually but it, it was necessary it was it was necessary to get that that character from a to b and to make Oh, it's hard to describe without um, giving any spoilers, but if you've read the story, anyone who, who reads it, they'll if they remember what I'm saying, they'll understand what, what I mean. It was it was quite difficult because it's not me. I think I think that's what I'm trying to say in a, in a really stupid roundabout way, is that sometimes you have to put yourself, or I've had to put myself in the shoes of this character. And it was not a place that I wanted to be. So that that was difficult. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, and that's true for the next story as well, which which some of the subject matter is quite um quite traumatizing uh, for for the main character, but also for the person that was happening to. And that's been quite difficult as well. I've had to read, uh, I've had to do a lot of research on uh, human trafficking, for example. And I've had to um, read a lot of stories, especially of what's been happening to, to young women. And it's, it, that's hard. That's, that's been hard. Yeah. It doesn't sound like you will stray away from any topic. So is there anything that you definitely wouldn't ever write? Uh, oh. Oh, I don't know. So far, no. You know, so far no. There's just some things I think that uh, I'm not. I'm not trying to say that I'm. I'm going to write things that are good, tough reading that um, that make people question their morality. Or it's not a social commentary. I mean, it is fiction. It's just fiction. It's their stories. I hope that people enjoy these stories. Um, but kind of the content yeah i'm not i'm not scared of, of writing about things that are, are maybe quite shocking if if it if it suits the story if that's if that's what it takes then then that's what i'll do do you have any facial phobias and would you write about them oh <laughs> oh my goodness i used to ha i used to be scared of quite a lot of things i used to be scared of heights i used to be scared of every, just about every insect that was flying around or crawling around on the floor but i kind of got over those things i've had to um the one thing that never fails to absolutely terrify me are, are zombies <laughs> <laughs> i absolutely hate zombies and it's a sort of thing i'm fascinated by you know if zombie movies and the walking dead love that absolutely loved it but i i am absolutely terrified i can't watch it on my own and when the zombies are there i'm like oh, oh. <laughs> so yeah and i'm not i don't have any phobias not that i know of not that not i've not discovered any phobias so 
I'm a brave person. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> 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 no. What am I like a Madonna morphic phobia? But it's all right, I'm dealing with that. <laughs> you could go off people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, God, yeah. I'm sure, uh, yeah. I'm sure I scare some of the authors I speak to. I don't think it's yeah. got to a phobia, but I'm sure I scare them. Mostly because I tell them I'm going to turn up on their doorstep. Oh. They get really, they get really freaked out. I don't know what's the wrong, what's the matter with them, bloody wimps. Honestly, well, you'd have to drive a long way to come and to come and turn up at my doorstep. It'd take you a while. Yeah, it, trust me, really not a problem. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, one of my um, favourite authors is in Cumbria, and that's quite a distance from where I am. Right. And he thinks that he's safe because of that, but yeah. You know, if I was really bored one day, not necessarily. When you've got five days off, maybe. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. I've got nothing nothing holding me back now, so, yeah. Go for it. Yeah. And um, he uh, he calls us his Twisted Annies um, <laughs> after Annie Wilkes in Misery. So, <laughs> yeah. So he thinks oh. that if we went to see him, then we'd be hobbling him until he wrote more books. But... <laughs> Honestly, I'm not a violent person. I wouldn't do that. So he's perfectly safe. Oh, God, Annie Wilkes. She was a horror. The woman in the movie was a pussycat compared to the one in the book. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I, used to, I used to like Stephen King books as well. Oh, my God. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah, it's quite... It's an ongoing joke now. It's quite funny. But, um, yeah, he calls... He's got 20, 20 odd women in his in like a, a art group. And uh, yeah, we're his Annie's. <laughs> yeah. it, it's fun. I've uh, done a picture of him um, taken from misery with the guy in the bed and changed the guy's face for this author's oh, face. Really? Yeah, which is awesome. I love it. <laughs> And he loved it as well. I will hasten to add. Good. <laughs> yeah, it's good actually. I think he really would be scared. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> um, have you made lots of author friends since you started writing? Yeah. Yeah. Joining the the writers community on Twitter has been absolutely brilliant. Really fantastic. And I have made friends with a lot of people yeah. in America, here, so near, near and far, and absolutely amazing. What fantastic support you get, some wonderful people, some great laughs, and it's just brilliant. I, I really do like Twitter. Instagram, I'm, I'm sort of struggling a little bit with that, but it's fine. It's, it's all new, all this sort of social media stuff to me. I've, I did, I've done Facebook for a few years, but mostly because I sort of move around a lot. So it was really just to sort of be able to keep in touch and see and share pictures and stuff like that. So Twitter is, mind you, my dog, the BT, he's had, he's had a Twitter account for a number of years. Uh, he's got more followers than me, <laughs> which is really odd. I was not on. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like that that was good practice and I think that's maybe why um uh, I enjoy Twitter I really do and I love to be part of the BT posse for the Border Terriers and the writing community in its own way is very similar to that because people are positive and they're supportive and they they share their successes and they support each other through worries and fears and, and it's, it's really nice so yeah I definitely have made a few things <laughs> and would you consider doing any events uh, next year I guess no yeah, well, I, I really hope to um it's it's part of the job now I suppose it's, that's why I'm trying to look at it like this is my job now and um I have to keep banging on about conspiracy of cats because I, yeah, want, I want people to, to 
to read it and enjoy it. And I'm not going to do that if I just sit in a dark room or sit in a, a, a room with a light on. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to see the keyboard on my laptop. <laughs> I wouldn't be much good at writing the next story, would I? No, not so much. <laughs> I have I have gone out uh, our local bookshop. Um, he has uh, agreed to do something, but maybe in October, because Scotland's a wee bit far behind. They're, they're a wee bit more sort of reserved in terms of releasing lockdown. There's still some restrictions at the moment. But I believe that um, Independent Bookshop Day is coming up in October. So I'm sort of focusing on that at the moment, and there's a couple of there's a couple of independents in the region. So I've spoken to two of them, and they're both, they're both quite interested in doing some little events. And I would also like to go to Edinburgh. And now that the festivals are coming to an end, because Edinburgh is a nightmare in terms of how many people there are in the city during the festivals. I'm not really sure if it probably won't be as busy as it normally is uh, because of COVID. But the accommodation prices, everything skyrockets during the festival. So I won't be going there until September. But I hope to I hope to get in contact with a few uh, independent bookshops in Edinburgh and see if, if they're interested in hosting some sort of an event with me. Yeah. Um, are you particularly friendly with the other Scottish authors? Because I think there's quite a, a group. Do you know many? Well, we've got um, Denzel Merrick. Uh, he lives nearby me. So mm -hmm. I, I do have some contact with him on social media. Not, not much, but um, we ha I haven't actually met him or anything like that. But I have bought his book today. His first, his first ever book. So I'll, I'll read that because I need to get to know this guy. You know, I want to know. I want to know his book. What am I going to talk to him about if I ever meet him in the pub? <laughs> I have to say, oh, I read your book. You know, oh, blah blah blah. You know, it's, 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 it's. and I'm a great fan of uh, Val McDermott and also Ian Rankin. You know, I'd love to do a Rebus pub crawl in Edinburgh <laughs> with Ian Rankin, though he drinks. Like real ale, and that's, that's just not for me. <laughs> I um I met Ian Rankin, um, and I saw Val McDermott. I didn't speak to her, but I did speak to. Well, Ian Rankin wished me a good morning, um, as he walked past when I was sitting drinking coffee and reading, which was weird. But oh, um, fantastic. yeah, but uh, at Harrogate. So if you're going to go to any festivals, then go to Harrogate next year, uh, next July, because yeah, yeah. it's awesome right yeah i've been i was following your adventures in harrogate actually and also val mcdermott and ian rankin uh, and there's a few other authors whose names escape me at the moment but um, i was i was following a lot of that on twitter yeah um, bloody scotland as well coming up soon yeah, that's I'm that's what I'm going to. I literally booked tickets about an hour ago. Actually, I nearly I forgot the time because I was looking, I was booking that and looking at hotels and stuff. And I was like, oh crap, it's three o'clock, really. <laughs> so, oh, right. and so that's why you're going up to Sterling. Yes. Ah, have you been before? Yeah. Oh, I hope you enjoy it. Yeah. Have you been to Scotland before? No. Oh well, bring your camera. And bring your brolly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bring everything, in fact, like all the season, the whole thing, because you, you'd never know what you're going to need. And right. What the oh, yeah, I've heard about them, yeah. yeah. What date is actually it's September, isn't it? Yeah, 17th to 19th. You might, the, the midges might be sort of gone by then because it's sort of May till September, so they'll not be as bad. Hopefully, yeah, because I bugs love me, so. All right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah, I hope they are, but no, nah, whatever. <laughs> It'll be worth it, because they've got um, Stephen King and um, Kathy Reichs, and they're going to interview, um, they'll interview them in America, but it'll be beamed into the place, oh, and um, the audience can ask questions as well, so. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah brilliant. Yeah.
I was like, I've been debating for a couple of days and like, nope, sod it. Stephen King's going to be there. I'm, I'm going. I don't yeah, care. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which actually leads me to one of my favourite questions. Uh, if you're able to spend a day with any author, dead or alive, who would you like to spend the day with? Well, well, spending the day with Stephen King is quite an attractive option. I would for uh, Agatha Christie because I remember. Oh no! Wait a minute. There's Agatha Christie. There's Ray Bradbury. I really <laughs> like Ray Bradbury as well. Probably no. Probably Agatha Christie. I think I don't know if I've read everything that she's ever written, but they are the books that I, I absolutely love from teenage years right up until now. I still love Agatha Christie. And she's the kind of woman that I imagine I could go to the Savoy and have afternoon tea with, and we could talk about murder and the best way to dispatch people to make it look like an accident. Because one of my stories coming up is called The Accidental Assassin. And that's about a young lady who makes a career change from being a carer to a contract killer. But she specialises in making it look like an accident. Agatha Christie would be quite handy for doing some research on that. So definitely her. Yeah, both uh, popular choices, Stephen King and Agatha Christie. So if uh, if that ever were to happen, they'd both be very busy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's awesome. Absolutely awesome. Fantastic. Loved her story. Still do. Yeah, so there's so many as well, and they're so different and so clever. And, yeah. 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 And apparently she used to get lots of her ideas when she was washing the dishes. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she washed a lot of dishes. Yeah. She certainly wrote a lot of books. I can't say I've ever got any inspiration for anything when I'm washing dishes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's cool. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Um, what's been your most overused word or phrase uh, that you've had to edit? Oh, probably. Probably the F word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably that. Um, <laughs> Scottish people, we, we tend to swear it's a national pastime. It's not, it, it, it doesn't seem offensive to us. It's not, um, you know, not, not that we like children to, to be swearing, but it, it's quite um, not normal to drop to F and blind in a conversation. Uh, so my uh, my main character Joss um, used to, was swearing a lot, so I've kind of I've kind of sort of edited that down. <laughs> and then the odd G though, <laughs> instead of <laughs> that's just me. That's me coming through. <laughs> Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> um, and what's been your favourite moment so far? Well, gosh, the last the last week, the book was officially published yesterday, which meant that a week ago, um, when when it was allowed to be pre-ordered um, on Amazon, they would publish my reviews from the art readers and I've had a few come through and oh my god what how how unexpected obviously hoped for hoped that the people who'd read the story would like it uh, but some some of the wonderful things that have people have said have just really really been fantastic just made me feel amazing it's just like oh, this so excited and, and so happy and just wonderful yeah. and one and one review which is actually on a, another writer's website and um, he uh, lower his name is he's he's the author of the scars of gaia he can't review the book because he's in america and it won't he won't be allowed to review it until it's on amazon so he wrote a review and put it on his website and and i 
red um, and and so it goes back to um, honoured, and that's a, a great and it's a, you you want it to happen, and you you sort of half expect it to happen, but then when it does happen, it's it's amazing. So yeah. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> and then you've got a nice blog tour coming up, so you get lots more reviews. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. October, yeah, the, fifth, the 5th until the 11th of October. I'm part of that, so you'll have to wait until then, until you get mine. Oh. <laughs> Because, yeah, because Zoe's my friend and um, she started doing blog tours. And I said to her, sign me up for all of them, it's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when she emailed about yours, I was like, I think it's kind of assumed that I'll be doing this anyway, but just to say that definitely yes. Oh, fantastic. I look forward to that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. It'll be good. And Zoe's incredible anyway, just in everything she's so thorough and stuff so yeah it'll be good yeah she's been emailing back and forward she's been keeping in touch yeah yeah she is um i don't know how she does it to be honest <laughs> crazy busy she woman late, i think yeah till the early hours i believe yeah because she she often emails me very late at night and i'm already in bed and then I wake up at four o'clock in the morning and get her email and, and then I answer her. She was like, my God, what is this woman doing at half past four in the morning writing an email? Yeah, that's fun. Um, and what's your uh, biggest goal or your biggest dream? Oh, golly. I, oh gosh, I would just love for people to like the book, really, for people to read it and enjoy it. And not only that book, but then to be able to publish the next and the next and and just have my book spread and, and be enjoyed by readers because that's what it's about. There's no point in, in writing a book if um, nobody's going to read it. I know obviously it would be not, not everybody's going to like it. It's like music, isn't it? Some people love heavy metal, other people hate it. That's, that's what's going to happen with that book, just like every other book that's ever been written, I suppose. But I would just like to be able to continue to write. Now I've started, I don't want to stop. Uh, also a very common answer, actually. And oh, it's, <laughs> I'm still common. No, it's just, it's just the same as everyone else, which is a good thing, right? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's interesting asking that question to authors that have done loads. You know, they've all, they've got a number one bestseller or an award or something. It's like, yeah. what do you want to achieve? And they still, they just want to keep writing. Same thing. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. That's what it's about. It's, it's a nice thing to do because you just get to disappear into your own little world and, and you get to make all the rules. You get to call the shots. What do you want that to love? <laughs> yeah. Um, and what do you like to do when you're not writing? I like gardening. I love gardening. Um, we had a big garden in France, and I, I well, it was a big a big heap of thorns and nettles in France, but I managed to make a garden out of it, which was really nice. And I, that's where I discovered that I liked gardening actually, because I had no idea that I would enjoy it or that I had any talent for it. But, so I, I like gardening. Um, I've rediscovered that I like swimming here. Um, not in the sea, because the sea is really cold. But the swimming pool is nice. There's a, a nice um, leisure center with a big swimming pool. So I go there three or four times a week. Um, I love walking the dogs. It's a really nice place to, to walk the dogs. There's lots of beach to great places for throwing the frisbee, you know, get the dogs wet, make them go into the sea to collect it. Um, and I'll just the usual things, I do a bit of cooking, cleaning, all the boring stuff, shopping. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, and I tell you what, I, 
because we lived in France in the middle of nowhere, we're absolutely loving where we are now because we're a five minute drive from Campbelltown and there are Indian restaurants and a Chinese restaurant and there's pizzas and there's a cinema and this is just fantastic. There's even pubs. So we've been having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like being a teenager again. Where will we go this weekend? <laughs> Um, do you like watching TV and films? And if you do, what's some of your favourites? Oh, <clears throat> we after spending so long in France, you can get UK TV, but you can't watch catch up because you're you know you're not eligible because you're out of the country. So we've literally got four and a half years of catch up TV, and we've discovered things like the bridge. You know the the Danish sort of Swedish cop drama, and yeah. the the original version of the killing. Um, we just finished watching Vienna Blood. There's a theme here. I like I love police things. Absolutely love them, and especially the sort of Scandic Scandi Noir things. So that that's my favourite thing. And if it's a movie, then maybe something with the rock. Because I absolutely adore the role. Last film I went to see was um, Jungle Cruise with him. Uh, and I really want to see that. I've heard it's amazing, and I, it, I it also it's, I it's love the role. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think because he's so sweet as well. That's it, exactly. And, yeah, he is rather nice. Yeah. Just, yeah. Anyway. Have you seen the Jumanji films? Are they brilliant? There's a third one coming out, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They had to yeah. stop. They had to stop production because of a uh, COVID. So it should. They should hopefully have started up again. So it should be imminent. Maybe next year. Awesome. Yeah. Silly but great. <laughs> oh, that's that's. I like silly. No. It's good fun and a bit of escapism. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, I don't think I have any more questions for you unless you think there's anything that I haven't asked you that you'd like to tell us. Well, I think we've covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> unless you want my life story, that'd be pretty, pretty cool. No, no, everything. So that's been brilliant. Thank you. That's for next time. I told you I'd go fairly gentle on you this time. But oh. trust me, I have more questions and they don't, they're not always that easy. So oh, okay. when your next book comes out and I interview again, then I'll have to bring out some of the trickier ones. Okay, I'll look forward to that. <laughs> You'll be fine. See, I've looked after you today, haven't I? Yes, you have. Yes, it's been lovely. <laughs> um, so nice just to, to properly speak to you because we, we've done a lot of emailing. So it's we have. Easy. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, so yeah, just before we sign off, would you like to just flash your book again and remind everyone where they can find out more about you and where they can buy your book from? Okay, it's Conspiracy of Cats. BC Harris is the name that I write under. Uh, and it's available on Amazon. It's also available, I believe, in WH Smith and Blackwells and all good booksellers. And uh, through Olympia Publishers in London, they, they have it on their website for sale at a very good price. And it's free postage in the UK, so that's quite a, quite a wee bonus there. Uh, and you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, golly. I'm BC Harris, at BC Harris 64. And I also have Beverly C. Harris Facebook page and Beverly C. Harris author on Instagram. And that's all my social medias. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, Donna.